Hello everyone, welcome to today's Novage webinar, Learn to Use Clips to Your Paint. Sarah Jean Chung, also known as the one Hello. There. Yes, we'll provide an overview of Clip Studio Prime Pro, where she'll go over Clip Studio's core features, including digital inking and painting, the drawing engine, rulers, materials, 3D objects, animation tools, and many more. So join us and find out why 5 million users love Clip Studio Paint. And let me tell you a little bit about Sergine. Sergine's a mm -hmm. freelance illustrator. She's told you before. She specializes in a wide range of mediums, including both digital and traditional. She streams live on Twitch and has built a community for many aspiring artists with which she shares her learnings and painting process. Her art is heavily inspired by Eastern culture and fashion, and her digital art style is influenced by her passion for in traditional art. Great, we're so exciting. <laughs> And now, <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. And now let me tell you a little bit about Novedge. Novedge mm -hmm. is changing the way designers purchase 3D software, offering more choices, more freedom, best advice, faster service, and most importantly, no headaches. Check us out at Novedge.com where you can find Clip Studio Paint Pro. And we're also all over the social media. You know that by now. And just a quick reminder that I'm recording this session so you can find it uh, later on today on Vimeo and YouTube. Just search for Novedge. And now uh, I'm going to share the stage with uh, Sir Jean and um, mm -hmm. enjoy the show. Okay. Let me click on this. All right. So this should be the right screen. Let me just yep. double check. Okay. Looking great. Hello, everybody. <laughs> uh, so thank you so much for that really nice intro, Barbara. And thank you, everybody, for participating today or the people who are watching afterward. Welcome. Uh, again, my name is Sergi. Thank you for having me. I am a full-time freelancer. And today I'll walk you over a few things in Clip Studio Paint that really, really helped me a ton uh, when it comes to drawing and painting. So a little bit of a background of Clip Studio Paint. Clip Studio Paint is one of the best selling programs in Asia because it was originally designed for Japanese manga artists. So they're, work, they're under a lot of pressure to get work done to, to you know, create 17 pages per week. And therefore, this program was originally designed to help speed things up for artists. It was designed specifically for drawing and painting. A little bit about my background. Um, before the recording, I talked a bit about my, my profession or the software that I used before. But before I got into Clip Studio Paint, I actually worked on Photoshop, in Photoshop for a long time, as well as Illustrator, InDesign, and Flash. Back then, it was called Flash. So I worked with Adobe products for a long time, more than 10 years. Uh, I did anything from animation, vector line art, to uh, to general drawing and painting, some photo editing in the Adobe products. But afterward, I found Clip Studio Paint, and I just I never went back because this program helped me when it comes to drawing and painting so much that. I just found it to be so much more intuitive for me. So before I get into uh, the whole thing, I'll give you an idea of what my art, st uh, art style is like. So you can somewhat get a sense of what I look for in a program. So I do a ton, I, I do a very painterly look uh, type of style. I come from a traditional uh, painter background. I love oil paint. So uh, coming from that background, what I looked for in the painting program is how intuitive it is and how fast um, it can accommodate my, my ease of blend. So for example, in traditional painting, when you are blending, uh, everything is quite seamless. You just add more water, add more, add more oil for oil paint, et cetera, uh, and then you it's just very intuitive to me. So in 
my painting software, that's the thing that I originally was looking for. And then from there, I kind of heard more things that made drawing so convenient in Eclipse Studio Paint. But these are samples of my work. These are some work in progresses that I've been working on recently. Um, I also have tackled a more smooth blending uh, before using the watercolor brushes that are in Clip Studio Paint uh, here. All right, and before we dive in again, <laughs> I'll talk a little bit about my PC setup. I am using Ryzen 2700, uh, GTX 1070. I am painting on a Cintiq 22 HD, even though I used to use an Intuos 3. So both of these are Wacom products. Uh, I used Intuos 3 for a very long time as well, and I, I loved it. I didn't feel a very strong disconnect until I started doing the line art. That's when I switched to the Cintiq. But overall, my PC uh, is 16 RAM. It's somewhat powerful. So when I'm using this, um, well, I would say it's medium powerful. So when I'm using a drawing software, I don't experience any lag or, unless the file size is just huge and I have uh, like millions layers. But overall, I haven't really found any struggle using the program. All right, so all the technical and boring stuff aside, I'll show you the exciting part. <laughs> all right, so first of all, I want to talk about the brush engine that I was, you know, that was the thing that really intrigued me. So for those who maybe, since, since, I, uh, since I would believe that you know, Photoshop is kind of uh, the pillar of uh, illustrator and painters in the digital world. Uh, I I will show you like what it's like to be painting in in Photoshop, so you kind of get a sense of <clears throat> of uh, of what I used to work with. So in Photoshop, this should seem very familiar with you. Uh, this should seem very familiar if you've used it before. Basically what you do is you have like this airbrush um, and then if you want to blend, what you do is you just pick the mid-tone, pick the mid-tone, use the color picker and then, you know, uh, slowly transition into each other. That's how you blend in Photoshop. Or you can do stuff like this and then another color, and then you can use the blur tool, the smudge tool, and then the blend tool, and then you kind of go in between and, and do that. But in Clip Studio Paint, what's super interesting is the brush engine. So under the brush setting right here, there is something called color mixing. So once you enable this, what it does, See, right now I'm pressing down my brush relatively hard. And then when I release the pressure, it actually gives it a blurry look, which is really, which makes it so seamless and so easy to just blend the two colors because basically what you're doing is really just releasing the pressure and let all the colors sort of blend together. So you can have the hard edges and then you can have the soft edges anytime you want, every, and anywhere you want, basically. And you can change all the amount of paint, density of paint. You can change so many things in here. It's, it's fully customizable. Uh, you can just duplicate a brush, make your own brush very easily. So for example, I have a lot of the different brushes that I am used to using. I created this dual color brush, which is something that I uh, use to blend. Right now, my canvas is at a low resolution, very low resolution actually, just because of the amount of things that I want to demonstrate today. So try to keep it uh, relatively low. But um, here, let me show you my go-to brush. So this is the oil paint flat brush. What it does is that it actually picks up you can drag the colors around just by, you know, pressing down harder, pressing down uh, smoother, pressing down lighter. You can pick the colors 
and just drag them around. So this particular function allows me to really get in and have those very uh, intricate blending when it comes to my work. So you can see, like in my work, I have a lot of these uh, little brush strokes that I was very used to having in my traditional work as well. So because it's so seamless, I don't have to switch between tools. I don't have to color pick. This really kind of made it super easy for my style to, to come together. So that's the brush engine. Now, the second one that really, really sets it apart comparing to the other, other painting software is actually something called the vector layer. So here we have John Doe. <laughs> we just have him over here. Oops. And what I'm gonna show you right here is normally you will have a raster layer, right? Like if you are familiar with digital painting, then you would know that there is usually a way to start a new layer. Um, so that's what a raster layer look like. Raster layer is used um, for you know painting, pixels, et cetera, et cetera. There is something called a vector layer, which is very interesting right here. So let me click on that. You notice that this particular layer has a little icon on the side um, compared to the raster layer. So the vector layer is where it's going to really save it for line artists, save so much time for line artists. Um, if you guys are familiar with vectors in Photoshop or Illustrator, you know, usually the way that you go about it is you put a point down using the pen tool and then you drag and then you point and then you drag and then use those little arms to adjust. <clears throat> but here in this drawing, uh, in this layer, what you do is, here, let's, let's draw a very ugly, I, I promise I do art, I promise I do art for a living, <laughs> but just for a demonstration purpose, yes. <laughs> uh, here, let's let's do something like this. Um, there's some rocks over here. There. All right. So, what happens is all of this is actually a vector path, right? If you are drawing on a raster layer, you know, let me use another color to represent the raster layer. The raster layer has no path, it's just pixels. Whereas the vector layer are all calculated path. So why is this important then? Because it enables something called a vector eraser. So on the raster layer, the vector eraser is blurred out, uh, grayed out, but on here, the vector eraser is enabled. There are different modes. I usually use the erase up to intersection. So it actually just calculates all the intersection for you. So you can get rid of these lines super, super easily. This is a godsend when it, uh, when it comes to cleaning up your drawing and just, you know, a lot of people, they probably draw uh, they want to draw, for example, hair. Uh, they draw a, a lot of hair like this. And then they want to just erase those intersections. So clean up their drawing very, very easily. Because what we used to do was literally zoom in. We would zoom in. We would zoom in and then here, let me show you what I used to do. I would zoom in and I would erase it like that. I erase it like that, you know, but now you just uh, overshoot your lines and you let it clean it up like that. It's still your vision, it just speeds things up. And you can even use it just like a regular eraser by checking this off. So now you can use it like a regular eraser. You can delete, um, oops, you can delete all of the lines as well. If you, if you want to just delete the whole line, you can do that just by choosing different settings. Okay, another really, really cool thing about it is that you can go into the very bottom, there's something called the correct line. So correct line is another very, very useful tool. 
you can choose to thicken the line width. So I can make the foreground a little bit thicker. For example, if I want to. I can make the background a little bit thinner. And because these are vector layers, so it's not actually losing any any quality when it comes to your uh, output quality. And then you can do, what you can do is you can do fixed width. For example, if you do animation in this program, you would need to have you would need to have certain fixed width so that the lines don't look like they're jumping all over the place. And then you can just do, for example, I want them all to be eight point pixel wide, why not? Uh, and then you can just do process the whole line and it will fix the lines for you. It's that easy. So this is why it was originally meant for Manga artist, manga, the Japanese term equivalents to comic books. So because they work with so much line art and they, they kind of just need that speed rather than you know spending the time on very tedious work instead of the actual creative work. This is also why a lot of the comic artists, the Marvel and DC are starting to convert to this just for this, if not for uh, this function alone. Uh, it's very, very, very useful. So on top of that, this isn't the only thing that I really like. So what we can do is the rulers. We can I'll show you the rulers. There are a lot of different types of really interesting rulers. You can do curve ruler. You can do uh, some figure ruler. You can do special rulers such as parallel line, parallel curve all the fancy big words. But today I will talk about the uh, ruler, sorry, the perspective ruler. So let's see, mm, let's do a simple two point perspective. Okay, so what this does is it gives you a horizon line, some um, vanishing point um, in a, and a vertical line to indicate where your, your uh, central line is gonna be. But what we're gonna do, right now the ruler is attached to my vector layer. And now everything that I'm drawing is actually snapping automatically to the horizon line. And I can easily turn this off as well. I can turn this off um, and I can just draw really freely. But you know, when you have it on, every single line you draw on here is going to snap to the horizon, uh, the, the vanishing point very cleanly. So this makes drawing background a breeze because you don't have to you know, whip out your ruler because uh, I draw traditionally, that's the only thing I have, it's the rulers. Um, and then just you know draw from there. And from here, then you can enable the vector eraser again, erase the transaction. And here, let's see. Just you know to give you an idea of how fast it can be to draw a building, you know, rather than having to go in um, and erase those lines individually. You can just do that. So you can oh, feel free to like overshoot all of your lines. Don't worry about uh, it too much. And then you can just easily clean them up afterward. Oops. So that one is not intersecting. That's why it will try to erase the entire line. But oh well, that's just for demonstration purpose. And of course, you can then go in and fix all of your line width if you will need to, right? Or you know, make this part a little bit thicker. Oh, I had processed the entire. So you can choose to either process the whole line or just process where your brush is going. Just like that. Very simple, very fast stuff. Um, 
because you know this was still going to be the outcome that I was aiming for. But then in the past, uh, in the past, what I would do is I would just you know redraw that line over and over until it's up to the point where it's thick enough for me if I'm adjusting it, right? And then you can even have um, here. Let's see, we can we can see concentric circle. Why not? But let's try this one. We can. Okay, so we can have something like this. Oh, let's use a different color. Where you can, you know, draw these circles and it will just snap to it for you. You know, I did not know, <laughs> I didn't even know about this when I was working on this painting. So I had this painting right here and you can see like there is a, a magic bell in the background, right? So what I, I when I was working on this painting in Clip Studio Paint, I was not aware of the concentric circle ruler. So what I did was I lassoed uh, using the, the circular lasso tool, and then I just made it smaller, color fill, made it smaller, color fill, until I got everything perfect the way that I wanted it. And after I discovered the concentric circle, I'm like, that could have saved me so much time. <laughs> so yeah, it's just everything in this um, program is designed to make your life a lot easier to get your visions out there. Um, and if you know people call that cheating, then by all means, you know I would rather be saving time <laughs> than doing that. And you know there is uh, a lot of different figure tools you can draw. Um, you can draw some speed lines. You can go in and have all of these different settings for for speed lines. So as you can see, it was this is very obviously just originally created for comic books, right? Because this is what they need. But instead of having to draw every single line, they just have tools that are convenient for those purposes. So that's. Uh, that's about it for for since we have limited time today and I have so many more things that I want to show. So uh, I won't get into more details with these. Now the next part, you might be curious of what this is, this John Doe. I get asked a lot because I use a ton of references in my work and I make my own in Clip Studio Paint. And every single time that I'm working on something, if I have these models up, everybody asks me, where did this thing come from? So that's the thing that I'm going to show you. Okay, now we have this little canvas here. What you do is you go to Windows, Material, there is something called a 3D model. Let's click on that. So, Body type, under body type, you will see once you install, when you first install Clip Studio Paint, you will see one, two, three, four. These four are default. You can go into search for material to go into the asset store to get more for free. So I downloaded all of these three and these three are actually just free from the asset store that people have made, but I'll use the default one to demonstrate. So what it is, is a full-fledged 3D model. You can manipulate the camera, you can zoom in, zoom out, you can rotate, you can spin it. Oops. <laughs> yeah, that's really spinning it. You can spin this, you can look at it from different grounds. So for example, you see those cubes on the bottom that's indicating the, the ground also and the perspective, which means you can port different models into the same scene and just by where you place it in this plane it's going to have correct perspective now that's not where it really shines so these models are fully posable all joints can be moved and the best thing is they can only move um they can only move to a point where your body is going to be locked. So you cannot you cannot move beyond where the body can move. You can also just drag uh, the the models. 
I find this to be a little bit more iffy. I prefer just, you know, having these little bars and then, um, you know, rotate the things. But it does have a little bit of a learning curve. Sometimes people are not super used to this, which means um, they gave you some poses. So we can have stuff like this. This is when the when is the webinar gonna end <laughs> pose? And then we have, let's see. Oh, let's try this one. This one looks pretty fabulous. Oh, that's a very fast pose. Let's go with this one. Why not? So there are a lot of different poses and they can be applied to every single model that you want. Uh, you can go ahead and you know, just change all of these joints. Um, like for example, shoulder muscle, how are you gonna move that shoulder? Is it going to be like the shoulder or is it gonna be the arm? Um, you know, so moving the thigh, which part do I, like you can rotate it, you can ex uh, extend it. Oh, that's beautiful. Why not? Let's just keep keeping that way, yeah? Sure. <laughs> and then, you can change the lighting. So look at that muscle details, right? Like the muscle details is actually quite solid. You can uh, have different body types as well. You can freely just move these around to give you more muscle details, uh, to give you more definition. You can download the model that has more facial um, details as well. And then you can change these lighting. You can then enable the second lighting. So but we artists, we really like those things called the rim lights, right? Or the secondary lighting. We would have the white light as the main lights, you know, so the, uh, the red light as the mandatory. And then you can just, you know, spin them around, um, click, on, click on all the things that you want to manipulate, uh, fine tune some of the things. And even, I actually use this as a study material a lot because it has really, really good um, anatomy, basically. So I can actually go in and see a lot of these details. Um, I can just zoom in and let me move the camera a little bit closer. So I can turn off these gray lines and then study the way uh, the muscles are looking. Okay. If you, don't, if you are done with the moving camera, you can also lock them etc. And you can even go down and change all the fingers. Oops. Let's move this hand out a little bit so you can see a little bit closer. So for example, I want to change this hand. Let's click on that hand and then let's close it as a, uh, as a fist. And that would not affect the other hand. Um, or you can change this one and then you can lock, you know, you can lock these fingers and then close the rest of the fingers. So now it's a it's a pretty pretty solid pose <laughs> and the next best thing is manga perspective so we can enable manga perspective and increase this this is basically foreshortening so you can have very extreme uh, foreshortening uh, so this is why i use this even a lot for uh, study purposes because i can i can very much see like how is this going to extend toward me? Um, how is that arm going to look? Instead of trying to pose in front of a mirror for two hours and trying to get that lighting right. So this thing has helped me a ton when it comes to drawing my uh, working uh, on, on my stuff. Because, for example, here, let me open this one. So this is the one that I downloaded as far as the body type. This is um, the macho, macho one. And then um, what I did was, you know, I had the manga perspective enabled. Oops. I had the manga perspective enabled so I could see that foot coming around. And that's the birth of this practice piece of Hulk destroying Christmas. <laughs> because that happens, of course, right? Um, and then I could study those muscles and um, how that comes around. I can do something like um, here. I can put two characters to the the scene, 
and also have have consistent light and then from there it birthed into this practice piece as well so then i can kind of combine um like i i can just see the general lighting of this because references are so important to artists we're always looking for references uh, whether it's googling for two hours uh looking at the stuff that you know you need for this particular body part and then you combine it with other other references or you pose in front of the mirror you do everything you can to aid you in that sense so this actually just saved me a ton of time because of ooh, because of that huh. there there you go sorry i started a very small canvas just for everything like very quickly put it in and out that's why the previews are a little bit more pixelated but you know, when you are using a, a full one, it will be, not be a problem. Uh, another thing are there are just so many assets. There are even stuff like this. So what does it say? This is OBJ file that people have made. It's in your asset store. Uh, this is very, very useful when it comes to like wanting to create your own scene and then wanting to see it from different shows, uh for your for your comic book work. So especially when you're working as a team, some people they might have the vision of this wanting to look a certain way, and then you have artists uh working for you, so you can just give them the OBJ and then they can they can incorporate that into their work. You can change the lighting on this as well. Um, so I use this as study material a ton. Uh, there are very, very, very many different assets that people are able to make themselves and then put it in here. There are very small things like even a pen. You know, like how do I draw a pen? How does a pen look um, when it's aiming at you, et cetera, et cetera. So just many things for you to cover. All right. So let's move on. So let's see. Okay, we still have a little bit of time. Um, let me move on to the next part, which is the line art. So the piece that I made uh, a, while, a while ago, it is very line art focused. Uh, this was the end result. So as the, this particular one has a lot of uh, flat color, correct? And colors a lot of textures a lot of little hatching lines to add shadows etc etc so the very first step to this particular art is to fill in colors right so for those who may have experience with other painting software such as photoshop how do you fill do you paint bucket tool flat colors i mean so if I want this, if I want to be a, right. So you just use the paint tool, right? But that's too slow. So what do they do? Because um, there are too many ones. And you're like click, 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 click. But that's too. What do they do? They use the lasso. And this is what I did, basically, back then before I discovered Clip Studio Paint. And then I circle around. Yeah, close in. I add more. Close in, and then I add more. And close it until I, you know, scroll around this entire. Right. And then I then go in and fill. And if it's not perfect, then I go in and I erase the side. That's how I did flat, flats. <clears throat> That's how I did flats before, just the quick way. <laughs> so what did Clip Studio Paint do? They're like, no, no, we're not doing it. So they created something, the close and fill. This is a very fascinating um, option. What it did is essentially closing around the area that are closed within your selection and then fill that area. 
So for example, if I wanted this rose, I just very easily circle around that. And it's, if I don't want, so for example, if I don't want this particular petal, I just circle the rest of, oh, I just circle so the area. And you have to close completely around the area that you want to fill. Um, if you, for example, if you miss, uh, if you just miss a corner there, but you select the rest of them, it'll fill it just, uh, it will fill that area. This makes it very easy. Just then, um, when when it comes to so intricate, I have so many, like, all of these things, um, it will get it in my way of bucketing. But with this function, oops, I can just do that. I can just do that. And uh, these little, these little uh, dots, they're not right. So you can go to um, fill area, uh, paint on fill area. You just go over that and it'll fill it for you. You don't have to be precise. You just go over it, like see, oh, those cool little white dots, gone, right? So we just pretty much sped me up, or um, I, I'm not joking, because I, I work pretty slow, but um, very picky about fill. So I worked quite slow in the past. This literally was sitting like at least 20 hours on this piece just with doing that. Um, so yeah, I find this to be insanely helpful in a, oops, look here, wrong one. Okay, no. Yeah, there you go. Then there's something else very interesting. It's called the lasso fill. So the lasso automatically fills as soon as it leaves a selection. So rather than uh, you know lasso in and then uh, using your short key to fill in, fill in background color, fill in uh, foreground color, you just release. So this this seem much. But when you're doing certain things, you want immediate feedback. It's actually very, very, very intuitive, very helpful, and just speed things up a lot. As I was saying, this program, a lot of things simply just existing to help speed things up for artists because we want to get our ideas out there, right? All we want to do is not not painting these tiny little pencils and making sure, you know, uh, things are perfect. Illustrating, oops, that's the wrong color. It's illustrating, making sure that you are able to execute um, your vision. So anything that can do to help is really important. Oh, I actually had some of the settings different. Okay, one last thing that I will show you. Uh, here. Oh. Let's disable that. Let's try something really weird. We have five minutes, okay, time. All right, you're probably like, wow, she's going nuts. <laughs> what does she do? We trust See. you. <laughs> uh -huh, that's where you're wrong. But basically, uh, what I'm doing, putting down a reference color uh, for vision this piece might have, and then trying to put them in the location that I want them to be. Okay, let's see. And then maybe a blue sky, I don't know. Let's have some yellow color over here. 
put some over here and some over here, some more green up here. So you're like, okay, what is this for? There is something very in under at colorize allergy preview. We're gonna use hint image and colorize. So the image is going to be, let me actually set as a reference later, but you saw uh, your color layer and then you go into colorize, you say use hint image and colorize. It's going to take a little, little bit of time. And what it does is actually it gave you a preview of your color palette following the line. And then trying to color your line so it's a little bit uh, a different wording so using the hint image you will be selecting your color layer using your uh, using colorize you'll be selecting your line layer so let's click on this one and see what happens okay so that's what happened it looked really different I would love to explain to you the technology behind this, but I am just the person who really loves the software. I don't actually know too much about the technical term. Like, I don't know what the programmer did to make this happen, but I find it to be very fascinating. And then you can go in, they probably combined, um, they probably combined all of the colors that are in this area and then uh, tried to calculate it, you know, I have no idea, but it's just so interesting to see. Um, and yeah, like I really like playing around with this, especially on my uh, on my smaller line arts, just to see like where I could possibly take it uh, for my traditional work even. Um, but yeah, that's that's what it can do for you. And honestly, we only have time for this much information. I I would love to also get into the comic books. Oh, actually, just one more minute. One more minute. I I will give the time back to Barbara. No worries. Take your time. We were <laughs> fascinated. Oh, that's great. I'm really good. I'm really glad. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really glad. Okay, let me uh, actually do this. Okay. Okay. Let's start a comic book page. Making pages. Please wait. Oh, there you go. Okay, so this is included in the EX version. If it if you do do not have the EX version, uh, let me. You can, you will not be able to load multiple pages. 
the pro version, which is the base version, will only give you one page. So if you're in the EX version, you can actually create multiple page in the same um, in in the same file, basically. So when you send it to your publisher or when you send it to your printer, you just send them one file. Okay. So they would have all the preset bleeds and also the preset borders for you. And then what you can do is you can just very easily divide all of these layers. And then you can just draw within that because it's all automatically masked for you. And then you just click on the one that you want. Click on the one that you want. And then that will be the page for you. And I love, I absolutely just love this function because it gives, it makes it so fast. Uh, you don't have to draw your own borders. You don't have to like be careful not to draw outside of the border. It just masks everything for you. And you can, instead of a, cause right now the folder has the raster layer. So instead of the raster layer, you can have the, uh, the vector layer instead. And then you can just go in, uh, draw a few things. Right now it's showing up as black. You'll notice that this is green, but it's showing up as black. That's because in the layer property, it says it's monochrome because you know most of the, the comic books are monochrome, right? So if you just change the expression color to color and it will bring back the color again, and then you can then you know clean up your lines very easily. This is abstract work. <laughs> But yeah, that's the, the last thing I want to show you guys. I hope that was helpful and I give you a little bit of insight of what this program can do. That was amazing. Thank I'm you. Getting a, I'm glad. getting a copy immediately. <laughs> <laughs> it, 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 I'm really glad. Yes. Yeah, it's, it's very intuitive, uh, very innovative in a way because it tilts. It, it just tilts over so many so many things that I was used to the hard way in the past. So like it really kind of blew my mind on how, how seamless things can be when it comes to digital art. That's fantastic. I'm sure a lot of people will be tempted to try it out immediately mm -hmm. like me. Um, yes, and if you have any questions, so we'll be hanging out a few more minutes. So ask mm -hmm. away. Wow. Yeah. This is beautiful. If you guys have any question, um, I if you want to try out the program, you can actually go to graphicsly.com uh, slash download and it will take you to the download page you can where you can download a free trial. So the free trial has uh, the functions. You just won't be able to save your file. So you can get a feel of the brush engine. You can get a feel of how fast uh, the lines uh, work in Clip Studio Paint. It has built-in stabilization. So if you do line art, that's really helpful. But yes. feel free to give uh, give it a try. Yeah. I would say, yeah. Yeah. I would say the difference between the EX version and the Pro version. Um, the Pro version is the the cheaper option, which is fifty dollars flat fee. You don't pay any subscription. You get all the updates for free. Actually, right before uh, the webinar, I was actually downloading the newest version. They just updated uh, the program again, making it better and adding more functions such as text warp, uh, a photo photo scanner um, function for the 3D model, which is really fascinating. So I was actually looking uh, at those things and then trying to download them. The pro version has everything that I just showed you. The EX version has multiple pages in the same file for pop comic book users and unlimited frames for animation, whereas the Pro only has 24 frames. Cool, yeah, there's also the free download on the Novage product page. So um, yes. you can find it anywhere you look for it. And yes. uh, yeah, I urge everybody to do it and me first though. <laughs> <laughs> there's <laughs> me first. <laughs> There's no questions yet, I guess. Uh, I mean, you made it look too easy, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I have no really questions glad. either because, um, yeah. 
yeah, it seems very intuitive, especially, you know, all of us that use a, a little bit fluent in Photoshop. This is, mm -hmm. I mean, wow. Um, yeah, great. So yeah. check it out. I'm going in this uh, case, I will take the screen back. Okay, so I will show you once again. Mm -hmm. um, where, give me a second where um, you can find the product on the Novaj page. First of all, I want to thank everybody for, for attending today. And here's, you. Um, you know, Novaj.com. You can search mm -hmm. uh, Clip Studio Paint. Uh, there's a free download for everybody. You can uh, look at both oh, versions. That's cool. Yep. And um, try them out. And uh, I also want to recommend mind you that today's presentation has been recorded and you can find it again later today on Vimeo and YouTube. Thank you so much, Sergene, for this amazing show. So Better than yeah, Netflix, thank guys. Thank you for having me. <laughs> and uh, looking forward to another webinar. What can I say? I'm mesmerized. <laughs> Thanks Absolutely. Again. Thank you guys so much for giving me the opportunity. And Check it out at no veg. <laughs> bye bye. Have a great rest Appreciate of the day. Appreciate it. Bye bye. Bye. Yeah.